Back in 1987, Canon embarked on a journey to my heart by inventing the first EF SLR camera, the 650D. It did 4K 120p, HD 480 frames per second, most likely, and it was ahead of its time. And Canon Color Science was invented, and people fell in love. Fast forward a couple decades of mistakes, and we talk about why Canon's at the top still and will forever be. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. Now, first things first, I have a purchase announcement. I'm looking at it. I can't wait to switch to it. I had two choices of lenses. I bought this one for some dumb reason when I could have had that one. Let's see if my mistake was mistaken. Next to me is a broken man with a broken spirit. He has no goals in life. He made mistakes and he regrets every one of them. And he went with a cheap lens, a Voigtlander, due to its vintage touch, not realizing the potential he could have had. 24 mil, 1.4, we're witnessing it. Unlike his disgusting look at him, just admiring that lens. Yeah, it can manual focus. It has a little focus scale on there. And it can auto focus, as we're seeing now. It never loses me, ever. Isn't that fun? Little voidy boy? Huh? Not so fun with your little pancake. Um, oh. Well, that's gonna ruin the audio. We got it. Canon 24mm Tony 1.4 L Lens Original Mark 1. On purpose. The Mark 2 was bullshit. And I can now autofocus. This is too exciting. Oh boy, so let's pay attention to see if this thing loses my ass, because I've had moments in Canon where it just not so dual pixel is that autofocus. And I think I'll bring in a little Zeiss Battis 25 mil 22 for a comparison at some point. Audio. I was on the brink of selling this Canon EOS R. I didn't see its purpose it's not very versatile it can only do like youtube you could vlog with it but it's kind of stupid the slow-mo is bullshit and so the only lens i had was this voigtlander 20 mil 3.5 manual focus only it wasn't very inspiring i could not use c-log because of the noisy footage it produced at iso 400 i just i couldn't expose a damn thing and I was kind of like, why do I have this? Like, I could just use my Sony. Could use any. We'll see why. Sony is the worst. In fact, let's just see now why Sony might irritate your soul. It's not like this is a bad camera. I'm just, right now, we're in neutral to prove a point. It's Sony Color Science is just never right. Sometimes it seems respectable. You're like, hmm, nice little orangey glow there. I can never get it to look normal. If I try to replicate the Canon look on a Sony camera, I'm tweaking things. I don't know why I end up lost in a rainbow pool of just like, oh, the yellows are a bit, okay, I'll tone down the yellows. That didn't work. Reds never looking right. How do you do that? Desaturate them, change the hue of them. The white balance, it's always too warm. They thought Canon's a warm glow. It isn't. It's accurate glow. These are both auto white balance, white confirmed for white people. And Sony always does it wrong. And one more side tangent before we talk about why Canon leads the industry, in my opinion, and why I choose them to film my acne ridden face. Tony 2, 25 mil. Will you really notice a difference between that and a 1.4? Because I chose this lens, the Zeiss Battis, over the G Master because I thought Zeiss had 3D pop. I preferred the warm micro contrasty glow. And it was Tony 2 was a compromise, but would it really be noticeable? I do believe it is. The Toniature has increased the pleasing 3D pop it's there and Canon color science. Now I am in love. I am in love with the Canon system because of this lens. The Voigtlander wasn't doing it for me. And Canon is our overlords. The Canon cripple. Ha 
what do you mean? I'm filming on a Canon, I'm a Canon fanboy now. There's no reason to hurt me. Just go off. I bought it. I put money into you. Can't wait to upgrade to the next one sometime. R6 Mark II, maybe? R5? I'm looking for a deal. Thank you. Thank you. Does the R5 come with a PC that can actually edit the file? Blood. So here's the sad reality. Sony is the superior camera. It's sharper, 1080p sharper, I think. Or is it now? Was that just my lens? The Voigtlander, are we sharp? I find the autofocus superior on a Sony. It's just faster, never second guesses you. Canon might be up there sometimes, but I don't know if it will ever lose me. I made a video and it did not lose me. And so it's more accurate than we think, but outside in low light, things happen. Canon's not as reliable as Sony, not even close. So you might think like, why would someone choose Canon? They're so cripple hammered. Like the specs are just, they're not up to par to what a Sony can do. Everything about them, not only like the resolutions, the speed, the frame rates, the autofocus. There's one very simple egotistical reason that Canon sits atop our universe. Canon skin tones are better than the competition. People look better and younger in a Canon camera. That's just a reality. We have to face it. That's all it is. I, for one, prefer Sony skin tones. They're accurate and cowboy-like. They show you the grit of our world. Nobody comes out of this world unscathed, emotionally. And that's what Sony gives you. They give you the harsh love that you need in this moment. Canon's a lie. Canon's lying to you. And Sony would never do that. Cowboy smoker mode. This is unfortunately as ugly as I can get on the Canon. It's no Sony smoker mode. Sharpness, saturation all the way up. After looking at the C-Log, turns this shirt orange. That ain't accurate. This is red. It's more like almost pink. It's like a faded red. I don't know how to grade Canon log. Just stay in standard and you'll be safe. Sony produces this clinical image developed by a reptilian who like just gives people prostate exams with cold gloves. And he's just, he has no emotion. And so like, he's just accurately representing the data that he sees from our world. He's just like, yes, there's a tree green. Green 47 is that tree and he'll punch it into a supercomputer, and then Sony replicates it in a digital, disgusting and disappointing mess that we don't want to see the reality of. This is like accurate and like data-driven, mathematical. Whereas Canon, it's worse, totally worse. Softer, you're like, what the hell is that? But is he 10 years younger? Can I buy his ebook? Does he have a monkey string? Wow. Will I be as young as he is? No. You just have a Canon camera and Canon has your back. It's an anti-aging system. I just switched into 4K. Notice how I had to rearrange my entire life to use the Canon. It's such a big crop. 1.745 times. That turned this 24 mil into like 42. I had to back up. I had to get another microphone. I'm searching through drawers. There's a hurricane over here. Whereas the Sony, we just also switched into 4K and nothing changed other than better sharpness. Better sharpness. I mean, I know I'm comparing a very old Canon camera here, the EOS R original. They've actually beat the Sony a7S III in a lot of ways in the R5. But if we're just looking at comparisons here, this bullshit like 1080p only, unless you crop in like this 700 times. The slow-mo is 720p resolution. You can't even choose that on a Sony. It doesn't even have 720p. Like it can't even go that low. 
and that's the best you can do. It's like 4K 120p versus 720p 120p. I peed once. So even though the Sony is the superior machine, you can't even argue it mathematically. You would lose and be arrested. Who would want to prefer this? Nobody. Canon is superior. And even though it sucks, it's better in every way. Canon appeases to dumb people who don't really know how to tweak settings. They make it very easy. The menu, it's fun, it's cartoony, and it's all touch screen. Everything can be seen on the front, boom, change that, that, boom. Sony is like, you go to touch it, it's like, oh, you activate tracking modes, nothing is touchable. The menu system is now, but I've grown and learned to love the Sony menu system, actually. I prefer it, but I've read books. Some of our new generation, they, they don't really know what those are anymore. So the reason Canon leads the industry, one, they were only like one of two companies way back then. It was like Canon, Nikon, there might have been some other fringe groups of society, but it was mostly them. So like people grew and knew to know Canon or Nikon. And Nikon went some strange directions. Canon pulled ahead for the longest time. It was like, Canon's the best. Nikon's pretty good too. Some freaks prefer Nikon. I don't know, understand that mindset. And so like, it's been ingrained in society, into our brains, that Canon is the best. And so it's marketing partly, and then it's also just experience. Over the long run, they know how to make cameras. And now their specs are kinda unimpressive, but they win in the final image. You just do a side by side and that's what matters in the end. Side by side, I prefer that. Not you, Sony, not you. Even though all the media is like using Sony now. I see it, I watch UFC, subscribe to my UFC Conspiracies channel right now or else. And like they're all using Sony cameras now. It's like, you've been brainwashed. It's because of that reliable autofocus. It's like, it's hard to go wrong with that. Like you don't have to make UFC fighters pleasing looking. It's not all about skin tones, there's grit. And that's what reptilians do best. They show the grit and reality, the harsh reality of our world. That's what Sony's good for, nothing else. The one thing I will say about Canon, for some reason, I cannot, for the life of me, grade sea log footage without it being the noisiest thing I've ever seen. I don't understand it. Like Sony, when you're in log, you switch it over to like airy colors. It's doable. It's still not perfect. There's still a hint of Sony colors in the mix, but like best dynamic range in the business and colors that are somewhat acceptable. And then you have the Canon and it's like, it's so questionable. Like it's 400 ISO. I don't get it. I've had such like color noise in my shirt where it's like I've had a black shirt. It looks purple or blue. I had a shirt under my microphone to help with the bouncing voice patterns. But like, just zoom in on that shirt and do you see it? Do you see the mess of the 8-bit codec? It's just bad, bad news. Did you notice a difference with the mic bouncing off my desk? One of you jabronis left that comment, so I humored you. I put a shirt under it. It's probably the best audio we've ever heard. That's cool. So even with all the quirks, especially in C-Log, just filming in standard straight out of camera, it's hard to beat this. It really is for YouTube. So now I'm, I'm proud to have a cheap system. Like EOS R, you can be had for like 1200 probably American Yankee dollars. And this 24 mil 1.4 lens, I paid 700 Canadian for it. That was overpriced but you find that used and it's like very cheap, basic system that will look better than your thousands of dollars Sony gear. And it's like, who are you trying to prove? Impress. I know words. So now I'm happy to have this as my YouTube setup and it's done. It's got this long ass boom arm, it never moves. I'm not gonna go vlog with it. I might test it. 24 mil, no stabe. That's bound to be good, just digital stabe. That would suck and be super heavy. 
but like this works just for here. And then maybe one day we upgrade a cannon body that sounds fun. R6 Mark II, I could consider it. As for Sony, I feel like you're now dedicated to wildlife and the slow motion street videography. Because I don't care about other people's skin tones. They can look fine. I need the reliable autofocus for that when I'm filming, not looking, and trying to be sneaky. I'm not filming you. What's up over there? I know it's pointed at your face. I'm not. It's not on. You'd see a tally light or something. Give me a break. Sony, you don't deserve to film my face. That's the reality. So, what do you think? Do you agree? 1080p for life? Soft is good, especially for men in bed. Softer the better. I'm going to go. Which one are you buying through my affiliate links? One of them, right? Subscribe at least. You unsubbed. I lose money that way.